हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर दिव्या मदान वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एफ एम जी स्क्रीनिंग एग्जाम जस्ट है जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इट वज द मिड ईयर एग्जाम एंड आई हैव गॉट इन सम अमेजिंग रिव्यूज फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स एंड पर्टिकुलरली फॉर द पेडियाट्रिक सेक्शन इट वॉज अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड एग्जाम दिस टाइम नो कंसेप्शल क्वेश्चन पर से बट मोर फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चन सो विदाउट फर्दर डू लेट्स बिगिन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द माइल स्टोन क्वेश्चन माइल स्टोन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज फर एज पेडियाट्रिक्स इज कंसर्न फॉर ऑल फ्री एग्जाम्स नीट बीट नीट बीट आई एन आई बीट एफ एम जी एग्जाम एंड यू जस्ट हैव टू रिकॉल और रीड थ्रू दीज माइल स्टोन जस्ट बिफोर योर एग्जाम सो दैट यू कैन वॉमिट इट आउट दिस इज अ वेरी वॉलेटाइल टॉपिक एंड आई रिकमेंड ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट्स टू गो थ्रू इट फर्स्ट so let's begin with this question what is the likely age of a child who can ride a tricycle walk up the stairs with alternate steps but cannot hop and the options are 2.5 years 3.5 years 4.5 years and 5.5 years so as far as uh, tricycle riding is concerned we know the child can ride a tricycle at 3 years of age if we talk about the stairs milestone stairs then initially the child uses 2 feet at one step right 2 feet at one step the child can go upstairs and downstairs with 2 feet at one steps at 2 years of age then the child learns to use alternate step that is 1 feet at each step upstairs at 3 years of age and finally the child learns how to use alternate stairs to come downstairs at 4 years of age so in the question they have mentioned that the child can walk up the stairs using the alternate steps again that means the child is more than 3 years of age but less than 4 years of age and lastly the child cannot hop cannot hop hopping comes at 4 years of age and skipping comes at 5 years of age right so by the statement we come to a conclusion that this child is definitely more than 3 years of age but less than more than 3 years of age but less than 4 years of age right so the most appropriate answer is go here is going to be b that is 3.5 years of age moving on to the next question they have asked to calculate the mid parental height of a female child of a male child with a father who is 183 cm tall and mother who is 175 cm tall we know that genetics play a very important role in the final height of a child i am short because my parents are short right so uh, before calculating the target height of that child we calculate this mid parental height so how do we calculate it we take the mother's height and father's height and average them out for a male child we add 6.5 cm and for a female child we subtract 6.5 cm so in this question we have a male child so we are going to add let's add the mother's and the father's height 183 plus 175 divided by 2 plus 6.5 cm so 183 plus 175 is 8 of uh, 358 right 358 divided by 2 plus 6.5 cm this comes out to be 179 plus 6.5 cm which is 185.5 cm right so the option a would be the best option over here the mid parental height of a male child right if the op- uh, question said female then you have to subtract 6.5 cm and the answer then could would have been 172.5 cm right 172.5 cm So moving on to the next question which of the following condition is associated with unconjugated hyperbil and the options are Duben Johnson syndrome Rotor syndrome biliary atresia and Gilbert syndrome so a very simple mnemonic to remember this congenital hyperbil uh, hyperbil conditions is DC motor right DC motor D is for direct direct bilirubin or C is for conjugated bilirubin right this direct and conjugated are one and the same thing and what all the, are the conditions in which you are going to see you are going to see it in duben johnson and you are going to see it in rotor syndrome so direct or conjugated hyperbil is in these two conditions whereas in gilbert syndrome and in regular najjar syndrome you are going to see unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin right so let's rule out the options now we know duben johnson and rotor we have conjugated in biliary atresia also there is a uh, flow restriction to the bile and that's why there is spillage of conjugated bile into the circulation so again biliary atresia is wrong gilbert syndrome is the right answer over here 
right in both gilbert and regler najjar syndrome the udp gt enzyme that is the conjugated enzyme is affected in gilbert syndrome in uh, response to the illness this enzyme's activity is affected whereas in regler najjar we have type 1 and type 2 in type 1 the enzyme is absent and in type 2 the activity is decrease right so now let's move on to the next question a congenital heart disease question what could be the possible diagnosis for a newborn that is exhibiting weak lower limb pulses and strong upper limb pulses very straightforward question the answer over here is coarctation of aorta we all know what happens in coarctation of aorta if this is my aorta we have ascending aorta arch of aorta and descending aorta and i know this descending aorta is going to further give branches to my lower limb vessels right what happens in coarctation of aorta this descending aorta is narrow down right this descending aorta segment is narrow down this is known as coarctation of aorta so what will happen in this child because of the less blood flow going into the lower limbs my lower limb pulses would be weaker whereas my upper limb pulses would be stronger right so this is the straight away question with the answer of coarctation of aorta depending upon the severity of this narrowing the presentation of the child will vary if there is very a severe narrowing complete narrowing the child will present in the neonatal age itself with the features of shock whereas if uh, the narrowing is partial the child will present later on with the complaints like intermittent claudication hypertension right so these would be the most important features moving on to the next question image based question where they gave an image of karyotyping and they asked which uh, what is suggested by this karyotyping so easily you can spot here what is the abnormality abnormality is in the chromosome number 18 there are three chromosomes at the level of 18th chromosome there is trisomy 18 so the answer is trisomy 18 which is edwards syndrome edwards syndrome let's look at the other options trisomy 13 we know is patau syndrome then we have trisomy 21 we all know that's down syndrome right so clear question straight away question in your face question i hope uh, all of you marked it correct moving down to the next question again an image based question they asked us to identify a pedigree so let's look at this pedigree in the first generation we can see that the mother is affected the female is affected and this affected female is passing on this disease to all the offspring all the offspring now if you look at the affected males affected males are not transmitting it to their offspring again affected males are not transferring it to the offspring but when the female is affected all the offspring are affected when the female is affected all the offspring are affected so this is a straight away pedigree of mitochondrial inheritance we all have the mitochondria from our mothers our fathers cannot give their mitochondria to us so uh, this is what a pedigree of a mitochondrial inheritance looks like right so now moving down to the next question what condition is the likely in a newborn presenting with a dry rough skin a big tongue and rough hair yes you all are right all of these features are of congenital hypothyroidism congenital hypothyroidism so the answer straight away here is cretinism let's look at the other options the other options are prader-willi syndrome which is a micro deletion syndrome and an imprinting disorder we see obesity hyperphagia right uh, a very fat looking child mental retardation all of these features would be given edwards syndrome is trisomy 18 what do we see we see a typical faces we see rock or bottom feet and then we have galactosemia where upon ingestion of galactose containing products the child is going to display symptoms right so none of the, them uh, fit this presentation the best presentation is congenital hypothyroidism that is cretinism moving down to the next question a child with a cftr gene mutation which is the gene mutation in cystic fibrosis what channel is defected over here we all know cystic fibrosis cftr gene it is the chloride channel that is affected so again a factual state of a question chloride now moving down to the last question what is the daily fluid requirement of a 3 day old baby with a birth weight of 1300 grams and the options were 100 to 110 ml per kg per day 80 to 90 ml per kg per day 120 to 130 ml per kg per day and 130 to 150 ml per kg per day let's look at this table from taken from the aims niku protocol also a similar table is given in your ghai textbook also so as a thumb rule you have to remember if you have a term child 
or a child whose weight is more than 1500 grams then on day one we start with 60 ml per kg per day and by the end of day seven we have to reach 150 ml per kg per day and in preterm babies or if the weight is less than 1500 grams then we begin with 80 ml per kg per day and we can go up till 180 ml per kg per day 150 to 180 ml per kg per day right so a very similar table is here an easier simplified thumb rule is this so if the child is term then day one is 60 to 80 then 80 to 100 100 to 120 120 to 140 140 to 160 and so on right whereas for a preterm baby it's or less than 1500 gram which is the question here the weight is mentioned as 1300 grams day one is 80 to 90 then 100 to 110 then 120 to 130 by day three so the answer here is going to be 120 to 130 right so overall conclusion is that most of the questions are factual questions you have to remember all of these make a list of all of these factual topics and don't uh, and make sure that you revise it just before the exam we don't need to mark these questions wrong right Com conceptuals one anyways if you have read it thoroughly you are going to answer this exam it is these factual questions that make the difference right so all the best and i hope uh, uh, all of you have corrected this pediatric section and if not uh, don't be disheartened you learn from your mistakes only and i wish you all the best for your results and uh, hoping to see you 